Welcome to the Dog Man. I figure it's high time we talk about dogs on this channel. Got a very varied amount of subjects I talk about on here. It's like a podcast channel. Constantly have to come up with new content, new ideas, new subjects. Some work well, some don't. But one subject that always works good and people like to watch is dogs. Now I came to this area which is known in this part of Arkansas as the River Valley. Uh, we are on the far west side, almost central Arkansas. Uh, we very close to the Oklahoma border. Well I came to this area in 2007, almost 20 years ago, 17 years ago. Uh, I grew up in the Tulsa area, so that's where I grew up only three hours from here but I lived in a town called Stigler Oklahoma which I worked for the newspaper there for almost four years and it is just like where I live now it was only an hour I think it was 45 minutes from Fort Smith so pretty much the same general area is here only it's in Oklahoma now Oklahoma and Arkansas in my eyes <laughs> are, are night and day night and day when it comes to dogs um, first thing I noticed I moved here in 2012 give you a little backstory on that uh, I grew up uh, a friend of mine I grew up with uh, I've known her since the third grade her and her husband had some property here and they just acquired it and she was heavy, heavy into dog rescue well when I came here I, I wasn't I liked dogs you know, I always had a special uh, love for dogs, but I wasn't into the rescue scene. And she said, you know, I had a job offer in Ketchikan, Alaska, and I took the drug. I was in Palm Beach, Florida. Okay, <laughs> it's, we'll go back a little bit. I was in Palm Beach, Florida. I have a friend there um, wanted me to come up, come down to Florida. Uh, just got divorced. I was in Tulsa. She wanted me to come down there and her father had passed away and she wanted me and I was very good at doing eBay. I actually used to have my own eBay store, brick and mortar, where people would bring things to me. I would list them, put them on eBay, do the research, yeah, yeah, all that. Her father had passed away. He had a pretty big estate, I know, because I packed every box, a little McMansion in Palm Beach, uh, or his mansion was in Miami Beach. She lived in Palm Beach. So all the things got packed up by me, loaded into two semi trucks. That's right, two semi trucks. That's how much stuff. This is after a garage sale that I had. That's another story there. If you hold a garage sale in Miami Beach, oh my God. It's, it's not like one here in Arkansas. But anyway. A lot of things were left. Her whole garage, two-car garage, was filled with things, and not cheap things. Um, stemware, crystal, I mean, antiques. So I came down there for about eight weeks to list on eBay. During that time, I was looking for a job, out of state, wherever. And I found a job in Ketchikan, Alaska. I also found a job in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I had not decided on either one I was leaning towards Ketchikan Alaska and that's probably where I would have ended up uh, took the drug test for you know you got to do the drug screening before you get hired most most of what I did running a, a journeyman press operator running presses you would get hired over the phone they would call your references blah 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 so I was leaning towards Ketchikan Alaska obviously a lot nicer than Little Rock Arkansas Anyway, they had acquired property here in Arkansas, uh, approximately 100 acres. And her husband had moved down ahead of time to help get the cabin. There was a cabin they inherited on like 60 acres to help get it ready. And she says, well, why don't you just come here and uh, help him and you can find work here. And I, I thought about it and I said, man, why not do something like that out of the ordinary and see what happens. Best move I ever made because my whole life changed since coming here. Uh, it's, it's been a struggle, but now it's starting to pay off. 
So back to the dogs. She was heavily into dog rescue. I got I got here at 2 p.m. I drove all the way from Palm Beach, Florida, straight through, did not stop. Might have stopped. I think I stopped just past the Arkansas line for an hour in a rest area and slept. But pretty much non-stop. And I get here 2 p.m. and I'm dead tired. I never met her husband. So I met him at the local cafe. Uh, takes me back to the cabin. I'm up for a few hours. I try to stay up, I think, till like 9 or 10 at night. And went to bed. Woke up the next morning. Waldo and his sister, Lucy, she passed away in 2017, we out in the front yard just playing like they live there. So I went out and I was playing with them for a while and they wouldn't leave. They, they weren't going to leave. And me and him were putting up a chain link fence that day, I think. I don't know. It's been a long time. So I said I named Waldo, Waldo, named Lucy, Lucy. And they just, you know, well, it's like a chain reaction. Then Wally shows up. And then Lulu, I had five dogs before I even moved to this property that were staying there. And so when I got this property, moved everybody here, you know, one big happy family. There were five when I first got here. And then I got Lily, and then I got Libby, and then I got Rooster. So I think there were seven. But I was also fostering puppies from the rescue that I was running. Uh, when I first came here, I was working at the ranch where I'd worked for all those years. But I hurt. that's where I hurt my back. I hurt it very bad. I was on a walker. I was on a cane for almost a year. A few months later, when it was starting to get better, I went to sit down in an office chair and landed right on my tailbone, injured it again. And that was another five, six months. And then I bought this place and just started working, clearing the land. And gradually, it's never gotten better, but I can, you know, it's much more manageable now. So I worked for a pawn shop. I couldn't do the ranch work anymore. I worked for the pawn shop about six years. And when I left there, went, went and ran a dog rescue. I took over the city pound here in town. Uh, don't even want to tell you what was going on with that, but it was not a no-kill shelter. Uh, there was some... First thing you notice when you move to this part of Arkansas is there are dogs running around everywhere. Everywhere. And they don't... A lot of them don't look good. Uh, I'm not bashing anybody here, but I noticed... You know, I didn't see that just an hour away in Oklahoma. I didn't see that there. You know, it wasn't that way. They got different laws in Oklahoma. Not here. Anyway, I took over. I met with the mayor. Uh, I, was, I, I was teamed up with my friend who founded the rescue. But she lived in Tulsa, so she couldn't run it. So I, I took on the rescue. It turned in overnight to a no-kill shelter. I walked into that place day one with all the... All the kennels full of dogs. We, I believe it had 10 kennels, but we would have to double them up, sometimes three in a kennel, because there were so many, so overwhelming. Otherwise, you had to turn them away. There was nothing you could do, and it got to that point so many times. Puppies. Puppies were unbelievable. How many puppies came in there? So I'd take over the shelter, uh... Not long after that, my brother's wife, uh, she, she came in to help me. She did a lot of the work as well. So we were doing that for a while. My back, dealing with puppies, you have to bend over a lot, picking them up and that. And it got to the point, after a while, I could no longer do that part of it. So one of the things I like to do in there that we would always at least once a week get a dog and they'd put it in a kennel the bite dog kennel it bit somebody 95% of the time it was a child that teased that dog and they'd bit a kid or they'd bit somebody and there's a few instances where the dog had to be put down for a rabies test and I won't get into how they do that but it's not pleasant 
to think about how a dog needs to be tested for rabies. And there's nothing you can do because obviously a child's life, you know, versus a dog, a child's going to win out. You have to test them. Um, and that's heartbreaking. But when these bite dogs would come in, I would always, I'd give them a day or so. I, I could just tell if a dog's going to, I've never been bit other than by my own dog. Uh, you can tell their demeanor. They're, they're, first of all, they're scared to death when they come in there. So you got to give them some time. I had a little chair, didn't even have a back on it. The back was broke off. I'd pull it up to their kennel. And I'd sit there and I'd talk to those new ones, the ones that were troubled. Who, you don't even know what kind of background they came from. And after a few days, hey, I'd give them some french fries, tr extra treats. Then I would go in there, sit on the floor with them, and never once, never once did I have a problem. And those bite dogs were the ones that I remember the most. I had a Sharpe. His name was Grumpy. He was vicious. I mean, vicious acting when he came in there. I seen right through his little chubby head. I knew he wasn't mean, um, but that took a couple days with him, and then he loved to go for walks. The minute I'd walk in, he was in the first kennel. That's the one Rooster was in when I saw Rooster, um, and he'd jump up and down, and man, he was just the coolest dog. I almost brought him home, but Grumpy wasn't too good around other dogs that I could see at the point. And he was unpredictable. You know, and Sharpays are that way. You got to look at the breed of them. Sharpays can be mean. They can be <laughs> unpredictable. But, you know, the situation I was in, it wouldn't have worked. I, I wasn't even in the house yet. I was still living in the fifth wheel. And there were many times, you know, when you got five dogs in a yard, there's going to be a scrap one now and then. Uh, especially if you got a bunch of females. Females are the worst. Go figure. You know, their, their fights are nasty. They are nasty. And they are not fun to break up when you are, you when you're disabled, have a bad back. Dog fights aren't fun to uh, break up. But, let's get back to the shelter. The cruel things you see, I can't even, you know, people would say, you should start a YouTube channel and go to the shelter. You, you can't, you can't film half the things that you see. The level of cruelty that you see people inflict on dogs is unreal. I mean, just when you think you've seen the worst, something worse comes in. There was a dog that came in, I believe the sheriff's department found it, under a bridge. And I don't even know what it was. I do got pictures of it. But it was a, we figured out it was a breeder, a breed dog. And then when she was no longer any good, they dumped her. And this dog wasn't no bigger than Rooster. Uh, we called her, well, I don't remember the name of her. It wasn't Rosie, that's another story. But she was so mangled and very sick and took her to the vet and they gave her some medication, didn't think she was going to make it. And we gave her a bath. Um, for, for about a few hours she seemed to perk up, but I put some toys in there with her. I put a bed in there for her. You had to keep her in a kennel to keep an eye on her. And she, she wasn't showing any improvement. So I did not want that dog to die in a kennel where she probably spent her whole life. So I brought her to this. This cabin wasn't finished. But I brought her here. And, and it was clean in here. It didn't have no walls up in here or anything yet. But it was clean. So I put a bed in the corner. I let her sleep in the bed in a house with room not not confined to a kennel and every hour I would come in here and check on her all through the night and I came in I think about two in the morning and checked you know petted her talked to her she raised her head went back down so I went back to the fifth wheel and when I came back the next hour, I think I, I drifted off. It was about an hour and a half. She was gone. So that dog, uh, among many others, was just one story. So that, that's a dog. She, in fact, <laughs> she passed away exactly 
exactly where I am sitting. This is where I had the bed. Um, you know, the last thing that dog saw was me patting her, and she probably looked up and around and said, Man, I'm free. And that's all that dog needed. But puppies would come in there and almost always get Parvo because Parvo was in the building. It doesn't matter how good you sanitize it. We brought in machines with special chemicals to get rid of it. You cannot. But people continue to dump puppies. And sometimes they'd make it, sometimes they wouldn't. But there's nothing worse than seeing a puppy suffer through Parvo. Um, I didn't want to tell you how that goes down. It ain't fun to watch. And the worst part is, you cannot bury a dog with Parvo. You cannot bury it. You have to dispose of them through the city. Uh, they basically go in the trash. You have to seal them in multiple trash bags. They basically go into the dump. And that's, that's the way it is. You cannot bury Parvo. You know, a dog with parvo, parvo lasts up to seven years in the soil. It is a horrific disease. And we saved a lot of them that had parvo. So there's a good side. We did save a lot of them. And it's a lot of work. you got to go in there every few hours, give them an IV, uh, give them fluids. Some of them pull through. And there were many of them that pulled through. But I learned... Anybody that works in rescue will tell you, you start to despise human beings. You really do. And when it gets to that point, you know, you, you have to get out of it. I don't know how some of these people do it, and they do it for years and years and years. But you can tell they hold a resentment towards humans, and it's understandable. Um, some, of the, some of the ways you see dogs come in, had one come in. I've got video. i got hundreds of videos of when I ran the rescue. You'll see me post them on both channels as shorts every now and then. I had one dog come in and obviously his leg, her leg was broken. Uh, a little pit bull. Her leg had been broken but it wasn't a recent injury. It was, but she could not walk on it. So we took her to the vet, had her leg amputated. It was a front leg. Had it amputated Within two days, that dog was running around. She'd already been trained how to walk on three legs. So losing that leg, uh, that was the best thing we could have done for her. And she got adopted, you know. Little tripod dogs get adopted quick, trust me. Uh, especially ones that can walk. Now that dog, I'd come in that kennel and that dog be running around in circles. You wonder how they didn't fall down. But... Amputating a dog's limb is no big, I mean, it, it sucks, but it's no big deal. They adapt. They can walk on three legs. Um, there's dogs that came in that couldn't use either one of their hind legs. Shepherds are bad for that. Uh, they got hip dysplasia. Uh, they get that a lot. There are certain breeds, your larger breeds. They got little buggies that you hook on in their butt. You know, they can tool around. So... Before people put dogs down, you, you know, you got to look at those kind of things. Can Is there a way this dog can have a happy life? And you got to have the time to be able to give the dog a happy life. Let me get some coffee. This one's going a bit long. I'll talk about this more in, in further videos, but dog rescue is not any kind of, and I had a lot of cats there too, a lot of cats. You could not adopt cats out to save your life in this area. People don't want cats. Cats don't survive long here, especially if you let them run around. Because um, there's, you know, a lot of wildlife here that could get a cat. But I would, they would bring me in, the, the policy was they would bring me in feral cats, full grown feral cats, they would trap them. And the shelter, had woods and railroad tracks right back there in a big pile of woods. And the feral cats would come in. There's nothing you can do with a feral cat. You can't adopt them out. As soon as they, the city, uh, the dog catcher would leave, I would take them back to those woods and let them go. Because that's the life they've always lived. Nobody's going to adopt them. They're never going to be house kit, uh, cats. Now, if you got kittens, feral kittens, that's another story. You can, uh, you can reform them but a full-grown feral cat just let them go 
you know, that's all I can. I mean, I didn't have space for cats. And you you can't handle a feral cat. They are vicious. <laughs> so that's what I would do with them. That is all you could do with them. And, you know, they've always lived on their own. They cat can survive. And a dog can survive. Uh, but dogs don't have the brains that a cat does when it comes to crossing roads and things like that. You know, Millie, I don't know how she survived. She survived for first several years of her life. I mean, you know the story on Millie. If you, if you don't, it's on my other channel. Uh, but she's, she doesn't run off anymore. She stays here. We got Millie under control. But it's not an easy thing, guys, dog rescue. And what got me is I would put out, I'd get on social media, we need volunteers, we need volunteers. Nobody. Very few people would even reply. I got a few people to come in. I think one guy is a city council member here. He would come in, help me, him and his wife, help me take the dogs out for a walk. Because if I didn't have help, there were days I would take 20 dogs for a walk. Because they all deserved. And there was a little concrete foundation that the building had been torn down. I called that the petting pad. So I would all, they'd get, look forward to that. I'd take them over there and I'd sit down and just pet on them, talk to them. And they love that. Had a big Siberian Husky that loved that. I, I've put her video up, Reba. But she was a bite dog. And, but I wished I could still do it, but it's just, oh man, I, I, I help out rescues. You know, I did the doc, Dogtober on my channel. I made a video on both channels every day for the month. I donated all the proceeds to the rescue. So that's one way I can help out now. As my channels grow, I'll be able to help out much more. Uh, I have found that helping dogs out, they appreciate it. They appreciate it and they never let you forget it. But if you help humans out, the ones I've helped, yeah, they don't. They forget real quick. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so I will side with the dogs anytime over people. That's just me, the dog man. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.